Hello folks, so today I want to really talk about or highlight a particular issue which is the disadvantage that uh, students, particularly those in the higher education sector, are facing because of the current lockdown restrictions and in particularly some caveats that they have that they can't use or explore the same as general rented accommodations similar to what my article earlier on touched on now really the main thing that i want to highlight here is students during lockdown especially this year uh, and last year as well when they've had their university accommodation generally speaking students will rent their accommodation for up to nine months excluding holidays and generally what tends to happen is the maintenance loan that they have effectively pays towards that accommodation cost. It pays towards uh, their living expenses. Now, there is some disparity between uh, more city universities and rural universities. The rural universities are generally cheaper because rent in general is cheaper and the city universities are generally a bit more expensive. Now, one thing that is worth remembering with that is a lot of these learners would generally be working in our hospitality and retail sectors, of which are closed currently. So some of that supplementary income that they would be having isn't effectively going to paying off their student rent bill. Now, the government has massively stepped in to support the rental market. They've done a lot of work to give renters and landlords uh, safeguards. These safeguards have helped landlords be able to give rental holidays and offered safeguards to renters knowing that they can have payment holidays if they were furloughed and equally give protections to avoiding them ending up on the street or without the house. Now, the main thing that has been the issue here is a lot of students fall into a very specific category all on their own and they're only renting those accommodation because they have to for an education setting. Now the government specific language that they put out as advice is the specific element really focusing on it is strongly advised against using that accommodation. Now, the strongly advised against is obviously because some of their courses, regardless of whether it's lab-based courses, practical courses, or so on, do have crucial practical elements. Now, if they would specifically said students are unable, it's forbidden for them to use a particular type of accommodation, they would be able to exploit the particular frustration of contracts that certain rental tenants would be able to use if the landlord isn't honouring the terms of their agreement. Now, students can't use that because of the specific term of the co uh, contract. They wouldn't be able to use that frustration of the contract clause because they can't use that frustration element. They can't get out of that rental agreement, meaning they will have to continue to pay a rental agreement for the remainder of the year. Now, some universities and some renters, not renters, sorry, landlords are offering some form of payback scheme or discount scheme to allow students to effectively be able to be compensated for the disruption that the that students have faced during this time. Now, with that being said, this is obviously a good part to play on the universities and the renters. But the thing to bear in mind here is we're putting on the we're putting the burden on the students who have already faced anxiety around their education, already facing challenges around how they consume their information, how they consume their content. But particularly what I want to highlight here is a lot of the the universities in particular, 
could have advised earlier on. Obviously, from a university's perspective, they wanted they want students to be on site, having the full experience as much as possible. And when students were were allowed to return last September, the advice was generally given, which was that the students could come back on site and could uh, effectively go to lectures as normal with social uh, social distancing in place. The issue is some learners, of which some of the ones who I currently teach who are th uh, thinking of going to university next year, if they were given the option of online only education, they may not have entered uh, or taken up that place at that university or at the very least some of them would have chose to study at home and that option could have in hindsight been given to two students to give them that option of not spending the money on the accommodation this year now in terms of uh, going back there's not really much point revisiting hindsight and with the vaccine rollout which the government has del uh, delivered and is continuing to delivering has been a great success. So it's unlikely that we'll be in this position again in the future. However, with that caveat, what we do have to think about is where we go from here. So at the moment, current circumstances is students are paying for accommodation they are not using. They can't get out of their contract because of our technicality in the wording of the contract. Vast majority can't use it and are advised, strongly advised against using it. However, if they were to take their landlords or uh, student accommodation to some form of court case, they would probably lose because of the wording of that contract being more ambiguous. So really what we've got to do in terms of any form of action or any form of support for learners is help find a collective voice for and for learners to effectively be able to advocate for a rent reduction, whether that be a repayment, a significant reduction uh, in terms of just allocating the months where they've missed, making sure that they have that money paid back in terms of as a discount or some form of compensation towards that. Now, in terms of how we can put, we could apply that, as I said in my article, I don't suggest some form of reimbursement using student finance. The general points would be very difficult to manage and organize and would end up generally costing more. The best advice I can think of is to suggest some form of rent reduction and repayment and uh, opportunity to cancel said contract for the remainder of the year. Now the caveat here is that universities are likely to be able to return for a, a very short period. The downside of which that short period of time is not really going to offer the students the same experience and is likely to be several weeks up to the point of where their assessments are and generally speaking once they've returned once they return and once they effectively start attending their lessons again they're only going to have a short amount of time with the uh, with the lecturing staff to re-engage to do that hard revision before they effectively sit their first year exams or second year exams the reason why I don't say so much with third and fourth year exams is because a lot of students who are in their third and final year are likely to be in private rental accommodation, which would be a slightly different agreement because they could still be at that university and some will have stayed in the in the private uh, private accommodation that they've arranged through la through separate landlords. And some landlords have been absolutely fantastic in offering some form of rental adjustments and in some cases rent holidays for learners, if that was the case. But that's very much on an individual basis. This is more for the first year students, the students who have 
been effectively prohibited from returning to their accommodation. Now, other elements to bear in mind, and a lot of the, uh, the elements that we need to discuss or we need to be aware of is, in particular, a lot of university courses have very practical based courses where they have lab facilities, state of the art equipment, fantastic technology to effectively encourage and teach the new skills, the best skills that our next generation need. Now, some of these practical elements will not be possible to reflect at home. It's very difficult to for students in an environment which isn't a university standard education or research center to replicate that, even with buying different software programs and different pieces of equipment where it might give an advantage to those learners, there is going to be arguments of where they are going to miss out on those key skills and key experiences. Now, in terms of how we reflect that, a lot of students are obviously calling for a reduction in fees. Now, as a teacher and as a lecturer, I know that university lecturing staff in large will be offering a change in different resources, an adjustment to different materials that they can do, and they will be trying their best to ensure this. However, the experience will not be there. They have not had the opportunity to effectively ask those different questions. And some learners, because of their in, uh, different differences in the households, per, for example, with, let's say, the internet connection that they have, the facilities, the equipment, the type of computer or software that they're using, there will be a greater disparity of disadvantage between different learners where wealthier individuals or individuals who have access to better equipment and better facilities will be at an advantage over certain other individuals. This the fault does not rest with universities, the fault does not rest with the student either. It is a disadvantage of the time and of the circumstances that COVID has put us in. Now the main thing that I'm effectively calling on universities to do and to offer is universities do need to be aware of this and I'm sure vast majority of them will be. If university assessments are due to take place this year, there needs to be time for students that are at a disadvantage because of circumstances outside of their control are able to effectively shore up with their colleagues and peers to be able to use the equipment, have op more open access to the laboratories, to the technology, uh, technology labs, the reading material and so on. And equally, to be able to have the opportunity to interact again with their lecturing staff on a more personal basis. The opportunity to find out what those are, uh, what elements they aren't 100% sure of because they've largely been support, uh, supported by lecturing and additional uh, reading material. The opportunity to question and to decipher that information on a more personal basis, a more tutorial basis rather than a lecturing basis. That will enable students to have that advantage to be able to not, they, they won't be able to get the time back, but to give them the opportunity to lessen the impact. And in terms of lessening the, the impact, universities can be doing, they certainly should be doing, taking the opportunity to potentially buy some of these licenses on a large scale, taking advantages on some of these businesses, promotions to offer these software for free. The software programs 
such as uh, as an example the likes of Grammarly, Son of Scent, uh, Audio Note Taker, different facilities which will make revision easier for those learners. By paying for a license in a way that enables a greater availability to the student, speaking to these companies directly to effectively enable an enhanced opportunity for these learners to revise will give them a general advantage and that's what we should be looking for and that's what we should be aiming for to not put any learner at a disadvantage and learners need to also feel that they have the support of their university there have been cases over this last academic year and HE in particular where students have felt isolated from their community, from the university itself and from other individuals around, such as in cases in particular universities, which I'm not going to name, where they have been told to isolate in their halls of residence and as a result of that isolation have either been fed uh, food from, which have been delivered from the cante uh, canteen or universities at a cost to the student directly and not been able to have even the same limited uh, limitations on freedoms that the general public has and having further limitations such as is the case with uh, particular universities where even in the halls of residence where the students are in flats of eight will be restricted to a smaller number where they could not go into those same common uh, common areas shared between a flat because of particular policies which are the interpretation of the universities of government guide, uh, guidance now the argument sh it, it, is there an argument for the uni for the government to step in to create uh, to offer greater support particularly in the areas of student rent and particularly in areas of encouraging universities to be more uh, more supportive of their learners in this academic period certainly have there been has there been evidence of people campaigning on behalf of the students most definitely and the argument is we need to show our young people our next generation that we are interested in their future and that we are going to help and again the only way we are going to take off this and the elements or burdens on them or on different individuals is opening that dialogue it's not about fault it's not about blame it's about making sure that they hear different people advocating and talking about issues that are concerning for them and which need to be highlighted more broadly now COVID has affected us all and it's had an effect on each generation in different ways but when we have stepped in to help other generations and uh, other generations and other groups we need to step in and help out this particular group of uh, group make sure that they have the same opportunities the same support that has been broadly given to the other generations as well it should not be about it should not be in a case of putting the students in a position where they feel that they aren't being listened to and supported and any help that we can give them will be heavily heavily valued and they need to know that they have people who are advocating on their behalf thank you very much